Hey, mushroom people. In a stunning and unexpected turn of events, I have found a collection of agaricus mushrooms in my very own yard. I say stunning and unexpected because it's been really dry in the North Carolina Piedmont, and so uh, pickings of mushrooms have been extraordinarily slim. So I'm very delighted to share this uh, collection of mushrooms with you today. I'm going to identify this as Agaricus reducibulbus. bulbus. Uh, it looks very similar to another species that it could be, which is Agaricus abrupta bulbus. Uh, I also want to qualify, I am not an Agaricus expert. Agaricus, like many mushroom genera, is a little bit challenging. And then um, one of the features that is important in identification of those two species is a uh, staining reaction, a yellowish staining reaction. And so these mushrooms do not have a yellow stain, and that is the reason I'm going to uh, call them Agaricus reducibulbus. bulbus. But except for all those other features, you could call it Agaricus abrupta bulbus. Anyway, before I get carried away with all my caveats and everything, uh, let's talk about the Agaricus genus in general because it's a highly common um, secondary decomposer. And what that means is it's a mushroom that uh, grows through its habitat and breaks down organic material. And so a lot of times when you find mushrooms growing on the ground, they're mutualists and they're growing in association with trees and plants. And so, you know, they, um, you'll find their mycelium in the soil, but it isn't quite the same as what happens when you find a secondary decomposer living in the soil. So Agaricus is the genus that contains um, Agaricus bisporus. That is the common white button mushroom. Also the portobello mushroom, also the portobellini mushroom, the baby bella, whatever you want to call it. The cap and stem sort of brownish to white mushroom that lives in the store is Agaricus bisporus. And so uh, it, as a secondary decomposer, will uh, grow through really rich um, compost. And so again, secondary meaning it's going after things that are already broken down a little bit. You know, you have a lot of decomposing mushrooms that will grow on wood, but secondary decomposers, you find them growing on the ground. And one of the things that alerts you to the fact it's a decomposing mushroom and not a mutualist mushroom is the fact that you may open up the area around it and uh, find just basically this big old chunk of mycelium that is uh, growing all through this substrate here. So um, that's one way that you can kind of get your head around a mushroom that's growing on the ground but is actually decomposing things. And that's, you know, whatever a mushroom's lifestyle is, is very important to figuring out what it is. Uh, so, you know, Agaricus is um, one of the uh, secondary decomposer genera that we see a lot of. And uh, there's some really lovely wild species. So I'm gonna talk about this particular collection. I've been showing off this one because it's in the best shape, but I actually have a couple of really nice specimens that show all of the classic features of Agaricus. Before I do that really quick, I've had a couple of people ask about this uh, Lactarius indigo shirt that I have. I do mushroom art for fun, so this is one of my pieces. If you want a shirt of your own, uh, I have a site called mushroomanna.com. It has this and a couple of other nerdy designs. All right, self-promotion aside, I'd love it if you get yourself a shirt, but I also won't be hurt or offended. So let's go back to these uh, Agaricus reducibulbus slash abruptibulbus, more or less. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get a little bit closer here because I'm struggling. So the first thing you wanna notice about um, a, uh, an agaricus mushroom in general is you have a cap and stem mushroom growing on the ground, but again, growing with uh, oftentimes like these big noticeable hunks of mycelium in uh, you know leaf litter in particular, that's where these were growing. Uh, you have a mushroom also that has, um, and in this case, it's really wonderful, it's called a partial veil. And so basically it's a protective layer of tissue that covers the mushroom's gills. So when the mushroom matures, that's going to break and it's going to leave a ring on the stem. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, so, you know, the partial veil on uh, Agaricus reducibulbus and abruptibulbus is described as being kind of cogwheeled. And so if you look at it, it, unfortunately, there we go, it's a little bit better. You can see the texture. So there's basically these little chunks of, uh, you know, floofy tissue on top of this protective layer of tissue. And if I mess with it, you'll see it's kind of sticky and uh, peels right off. And what you'll see underneath 
is a mushroom. Let's see what color we are in the gills right now. So we have really pale gills at the moment. So mushrooms, when they're, or the, you know, agaricus mushrooms, when they're uh, babies and immature, the gills are pale, especially if they're still protected by this partial veil. So, you know, we have a cap and stem mushroom with a partial veil on it. Uh, and what happens when that, um, when that lovely thing bursts is you end up with something that looks a lot more like this. Now, uh, these guys are a little bit on the messed up side, but this is actually a pretty cool specimen, despite the fact that uh, it's been eaten by bugs all day. So um, you can see here that you have a ring on the stem that's very distinctive. And so that's what happens when that partial veil breaks. You get a ring on the stem that, uh, you know, in this case is a little brownish on top, and you still have some of the cogwheel material that you can observe. The other thing that you want to notice about agaricus, so, you know, we saw that one that had the partial veil protecting it. As the mushroom matures and as the uh, gills open up, uh, they turn a pinkish color and purpley color, and then ultimately turn a really dark chocolatey brown. So, you know, looking very much like a portobello mushroom you would find in the store. This one's really, uh, you know, at the very, very last moments of its, uh, uh, viability as a sporulator. So what's going on here is that you have uh, mushrooms that start out with these pale gills and uh, the spores are a sort of dark chocolatey brown, but you have this really nice in-between period with most agaricus mushrooms where you have a nice pinky color to them. So uh, besides, you know, a pale to pink to brown um, gill surface, another thing you'll notice about this uh, mushroom is that you have a really clear uh, distinction between sort of where the uh, the stem and the cap uh, are connected and the gills. And I, I popped it off so you can see basically there's like a little ring here. Let me see if it's if this is actually this specimen which is also still pale gilled and you can see just the beginnings of the pink coming in. This is actually it's interesting in the camera it looks it looks more pink than it does uh, IRL. But anyway, what I was pointing out here is uh, you have this little separation here between the gills and uh, the stem itself. Um, additionally, the gills are always like really tightly packed. And in the case of uh, Agaricus um, abruptibulbus and reducibulbus, they have a nice almondy aroma. So if you smell this mushroom, it, it smells a little bit like almond extract and, uh, you know, many agaricus mushrooms that are wild and uh, edible in choice have this sort of nice, uh, you know, anise or, or um, really to me, it's very almondy aroma. In this case, it's not very strong. So uh, the thing that gives these two mushrooms, Abruptobulbus and Reducibulbus, their names is the fact that they have a pretty unusual feature for agaricus. So everything I've covered thus far, more or less, is kind of like puts you in the agaricus area. You know, you have rings on stems, you have um, chocolatey colored spores and gills, you have a little bit of pink in the middle, sometimes you have an almond smell. Uh, but, you know, most agaricus mushrooms, they come to the base and that's just like the base of the mushroom. But with abruptobulbus and reducibulbus, you have this little uh, sort of foot at the base of the mushroom and it looks like a little uh, flat nubbin. Now, the thing that's interesting about this is that when you originally, or when I originally approached this mushroom, I think it was uh, this specimen, which unfortunately is really uh, a little worse for wear. So I approached it and I saw it from here and I could see a little bit of enlargement at the base. And I'm like, oh, I think this is an Amanita mushroom because you have a lot of uh, really beautiful mushrooms in the Amanita genus with pale gills throughout their life cycle. And one of the other distinguishing features for them is that they have some sort of bulb or, you know, a big old cup or sack of tissue at the base. So once I turn this over and I'm like, oh, it has kind of pinky purple gills, but it has this bulb. I'm like, okay, abrupt the bulbous, which is uh, the abrupt bulb agaricus gives its, its name. So uh, as far as this distinction between reducibulbus and abruptibulbus, 
uh, and my willingness also to jettison both of those IDs if they are incorrect. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty confident in that, but again, all mushroom genera are challenging, and so I want to, uh, you know, give myself the benefit of the doubt just in case I screw it up. Uh, so if you have, uh, if you have a correction for me, you can always leave them in the comments, and I promise to graciously correct myself. Uh, but anyway, uh, so the difference, as described in the literature, between uh, abruptobulbus and reducibulbus is a staining reaction, a yellowish staining reaction when you handle the mushroom. So a lot of agaricus mushrooms and species have a sort of, um, you know, yellowish staining or tinging. Sometimes it's very dramatic. Uh, and so, you know, you rub the mushroom's cap and it all of a sudden sort of blooms for you. We have uh, Agaricus aura color group, which is this golden yellowy uh, Agaricus mushroom. It's really beautiful. And, uh, you know, so Agaricus abruptibulbus has a yellow staining reaction, whereas Agaricus reducibulbus, the bulb is described as being slightly different, and I can't really tell here. Uh, and, um, it does not stain. So reducibulbus and abruptibulbus, as far as like what I could do with my eyeballs without going much further into literature, microscopy possibly, and using uh, reagents to see what kind of staining reactions this might get if I start to throw chemicals onto it. If I'm just using my, my eyeballs, uh, I would call this reducibulbus because it doesn't have um, a yellow staining reaction. But this, this foot, this bulb is really interesting because uh, Amanita, you know, is probably the most important genus, not the most important genus to learn, but if you're interested in foraging mushrooms safely, understanding how to identify an Amanita and being cautious around gilled mushrooms that have rings on the stem and some sort of bulbous or cup or enlargement at the base of the stem is really important because there are some Amanitas that are very, very toxic. And so uh, this is kind of an unusual little stinker. I am so delighted that I found it. Uh, you know, it, it uh, oh, I, I wanted to mention one other feature actually with this one. So this is probably like if I were going to eat this mushroom, which I will not, there's a couple of reasons why. So let me go into this. First of all, I haven't eaten this species before. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm like hesitant, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, I want to post this, make sure that my ID is rock solid before I'd even think about it. But uh, more to the point, the bugs have been very hard at work on this entire collection. Uh, wild agaricus is really tasty, um, and you know, the ones, there are some that are toxic and you need to be cautious of them, and they often smell very strongly of, uh, you know, chemicals and kind of glue. But the main thing you're really, uh, like if you're a novice that you're looking out for and you may want to avoid agaricus to begin with is not so much poisoning yourself with an agaricus, uh, but poisoning yourself with an amanita mushroom or another guild mushroom that resembles an agaricus mushroom. Anyway, that's a whole lot of fuss, but the thing that I really like about this particular specimen is it has this nice sort of marshmallowy uh, cap. And uh, that is something that you'll often see in agaricus mushrooms. So you have a nice little, you know, lump on the top here. And, uh, you know, some agaricus you'll have, um, like scales some of them are brown or reddish like have reddish tones to them this has just a little bit of yellow i don't know if i would call it a yellow stain okay so we have reached uh, the conclusion of all i could possibly say about this mushroom i think the last thing i'm going to try though is i'm going to cut this one specimen that is the most fresh in half and see if i get a staining reaction i eviscerated a couple of the other ones and did not get uh, a yellow stain out of it, or what I would consider to be a significant yellow stain. So like, it's, I mean, I would call that so negligible as to, you know, not really count. I'm gonna let this sit around for a while. Sometimes these staining reactions are very slow to come in. And then um, additionally, a lot of work has been done in the agaricus genus, and I am without a book that I am going to go and purchase right now um, by a gentleman named Kerrigan that covers uh, the latest treatment of agaricus mushrooms in North America, and it's from 2016. So I'm going to go and grab that from my library because um, I want to become more confident in my lack of understanding of these mushrooms. Anyway, I hope that you are well. 
I think I am satiated and satisfied. It's been a very unusual uh, and, you know, good challenging Wednesday, but at the same time, I felt sort of sorry for myself at the end of the workday. And I found some mushrooms. It was just sort of this like magical uh, injection of optimism into my day. So I'm as delighted as can be. I hope you find mushrooms. We've had some rain at long last. So maybe I will bump into you out in the woods uh, foraging for chanterelles or something similarly silly.